Hi, this is Tara Omatosha with Inspire Into Action. Today we have Alicia Adams here. How are you doing? Hello, how are you? I'm doing good, doing good. I'm glad you were able to do the interview with us and to tell us about your business. I am so excited to do that. Thank you so much for having me. So Alicia, tell us again who you are and what business that you have. Yes, um, so my name is Alicia Adams and I am the owner, founder, and CEO of Beautifully Brown Me, LLC. And it is definitely um, a labor of love, something that has really been brewing within me, I guess, since I was born. And I finally decided to take that step and move toward my passion and dream and start this business. And Beautifully Brown Me, LLC is about celebrating, empowering, empowering inspiring, beautifully brown women and girls. Um, to know that they are beautiful, to know that they are smart, to know that they are important and deserve to be seen and heard in this world. And so through products, events, conferences, workshops, and a variety of different venues, that is what we strive to do through Beautifully Brown Me. That's really great. We need that. We, we continue to need that to, to build our self-esteem up in this society. So that's really great. Absolutely. What inspired you to start this business? Um, well, you know, I've always been interested in issues facing black women and girls. Um, as a kid in school, I always worked with other kids. When I went to college, I majored in African American history and women's history. So there's always been that passion there. And so I guess God knew that that was what I needed because I ended up with four daughters. Um, and so <laughs> something just told me, okay, look, Everything has been laid out for you. You just have to take that step. And although I've been kind of thinking about the idea and then not thinking about it and thinking about other ideas, I would always come back to this, this thing that I'm so passionate about. But I would say that around December of last year, there was really a critical moment for me that said, okay, you need to do something. And you may remember there was um, a video that was being circulated that went viral of two little girls, two little white girls who received two black doll babies for Christmas. And the girls broke out in tears when they received these dolls. And honestly, I think the initial reaction of the girls was not really to cry, but in the background, their mothers were not providing the proper support. And they were actually giggling and acting like these dolls were something that they should be afraid of or that they should not want. And that just enraged me that still in 2015 at the time, we have these issues and that little white girls or their moms don't see that it's appropriate and fine and wonderful for them to play with black dolls. And I thought about just my little girls and all the other little girls like them who are not getting that message that you are beautiful, you are important. If you think about the images that we see in the media and on TV, they're not sending that message to our girls. And I realize that I cannot leave that to chance. I have to be very intentional and explicit about the messages and the images that my girls see. And I knew that I needed to take action and not just assume that it was just gonna happen. And so I decided just that very night um, after I finally decided to click on that video that I heard about that I was gonna do something and Beautifully Brown Me LLC was born from that. And since then, it has kind of taken off. Um, it's something that my girls are involved in with me, and I can just see a difference in them as well um, as they're going along this journey with me. And so I'm just very excited about what it has done for me, for my girls, and for others that I've come in contact with. That's really great. I'm sure it does um, things for boys as well because uh, they are affected as well because, you know, Whatever you see in media and, and, and presented, if, it, if it's putting a negative spin on brown girls, then boys are going to think the same thing about brown girls, that they are negative and may not want to be around them. And that's not what we want. Exactly, exactly. When you hear sometimes about how our young men are treating our young women, it's just overall a devaluation of ourselves. And, you know, that has to stop. And I know that I can't change the whole world, but I can start with a small corner and hopefully have a wider impact. Yeah, because if you if you teach one, then they teach one and then they teach one and it makes it makes a bigger impact than not saying anything at all. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That's great. So in this time period that you started your business, um, I'm sure there have been a lot of things that you've learned. Mm -hmm. And so could you share some of those learning tips or from maybe challenges that you've experienced mm -hmm. that someone could glean from? They can learn from and that maybe not make the same mistakes or learning points or they maybe not have the same challenges. If they listen to your advice, you know, they can avoid those. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, I would say the first thing that I have learned is to just take one step. And that's been the thing that I've told everyone that I've talked to. Take one step. I think I've spent so many years trying to come up with the perfect plan, the perfect idea before I took a step. And finally, I've taken a, probably the biggest step that I've taken as an entrepreneur to date. And just taking that one step leads to the next step and the next step and the next step. And what I've learned is that you don't have to have everything figured out, but if you just take one step, then you will get that direction to take the next step. And so I would say to all of the people who are sitting on great ideas or you know great dreams and passions, just take one step towards that. Um, I regret that I haven't done this before now because I know that this is what I should have been doing, but it was that fear of not having the perfect plan. So definitely, Take one step. Um, then I would say the next thing after taking a step is to be smart. Um, I think once I decided I was going to do this, I got a little gung ho. I started buying a lot of things. You know, my husband's looking at me crazy, like, "What is going on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> How are we paying for all this?" I was like, "Babe, I've got a dream." He's like, "Yeah, okay." It's a dream. <laughs> but I realized that. I didn't necessarily need to put in as much money as I did for certain things. Um, and there's so many options out here now um, through drop shipping. Um, so one of the products that I sell is t-shirts, which I don't know if you can see. Here, I can't see. Like, I like to stand up a little bit. I can't see it. One of my favorite ones, Brown Girls. Oh, okay. okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, I designed a lot of the shirts and bought a lot of them up front. So it was great to have them in my hand so that I could make sure that they were um, up to my standards, that I liked them, it was something I would wear, and so that people could see me wearing them. But mm -hmm. as I've gotten smarter, I realized that there are also other ways, and there are so many venues for you to design shirts online without having to put a whole lot of money up front and using some drop shipping services to um, sell your t-shirts. So just lessons learned going forward. And there's so much research out there from people who have done the same thing, who've made the same mistake, that you know, I wish I had just known that information. But again, going back to my first point, taking a step helped me to get out there and to have that learning experience. And so I know going forward, I won't try to buy everything that I wanna sell, but I will find some ways to be able to sell the things that I want without putting a whole lot of my own money up front. That's, that's really good. That's good information because a lot of people think, and, and I mean, you know, that's what sometimes, well, first of all, a lot of people think they need to put out a lot of money to start a business, which is not necessarily true at all. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends, like you said, what research you have done or who you know, and mm -hmm. maybe they're doing something similar. Just, you know, just by word of mouth. And mm -hmm. the second one is, is fear. I mean, a lot of times we have to remember, realize that fear is not real. It's, it's It really is in our mind. Yeah. And we can either act on the fear or suppress mm -hmm. it and say, you know what, I'm going to take that step. So I think that's really important. A lot of people, like you said, we have a lot of dreams, a lot of big goals and mm -hmm. ideas come to us, um, but we don't move on it. There's a lot of people that are in the graveyard right now that have died with ideas, have died with recipes, and a lot of value that is in the graveyard because they did not act on it. Yeah, you're so absolutely right. And I'm, I just feel so liberated that I took a step. So no matter where this may go, although I hope that I can do great things through Beautifully Brown Me, no matter where it goes, I feel fulfilled that I have taken a step towards my passion. That's and really good. I think everybody deserves to have that experience. So yeah, yeah, I agree too. What are your goals for your business? I I know I know I didn't I didn't really ask you this before, but I was just thinking like, what are, what are your goals for your business? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I, I have many goals, probably too many. <laughs> One is that I want Oprah to be wearing my shirt 
one day. Um, I know. I want to be. I want to be interviewing Oprah too. <laughs> right, exactly. So Oprah, get a brown girl slaying shirt. I know that's right. You should send. You should just send it to her. Yes, I was thinking about that. Um, but I also just want to be able to reach young girls and I, you know, I haven't come up with a number, but I recently attended a career expo at a high school. Mm -hmm. And although I knew this was important, I didn't realize like how urgent it is for our girls. And I had girls at the table just crying mm -hmm. and it was amazing to me. I really didn't expect that type of reaction because I came to them to talk about Beautifully Brown Me, but also to encourage them to think of their own business ideas that they could contribute to the world. And girls were breaking down in tears. And so that pain is still there. I mean, we think of it as something from the past that we have grown from and that we've progressed from. But the reality is that our young girls today are still like really feeling the wounds of that past. And so I really wanna be able to have um, a large impact on young girls. And I don't know how far my reach will go, um, but I'm trying to find some ways to kind of extend what I as one person can do to reach mm -hmm. as many girls as possible. That's great. That's really great. You're, you're right. A, a lot of the wounds that we are, we feel, our parents feel, sometimes it, 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 it's generational. You know, it drips down from the mom and the dad. Maybe they didn't step out and try to achieve their dream. Mm -hmm. So when the child comes to them about their dreams, they, they push them aside like, oh, that will never happen. Yeah. And instead of really embracing and say, hey, let's take this and let's see how far it goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's yeah. why it was so important for me to work with young girls as well as women. Um, because if you work with girls and then you send them into environments where um, their moms or grandmoms or aunties still have the same mindset, then it's very difficult for you to change. Um, yes. But I'm hoping to take a holistic approach where, yes, I'm working with girls, but also working with parents, also working with teachers and communities. Because as you said, so many of these things are generational have been passed down. And so we have to have that pebble effect where we're expanding just beyond the center. Yeah, that's really great. So um, in regards to business, what are some skills that you feel are important for entrepreneurs to have? Hmm. Marketing um, is the number one. <laughs> that is the thing that I'm still trying to really grasp. Um, I've noticed that when I'm in front of people and I'm talking to people and they're seeing the product and they're experiencing the products, they love the mission and the vision and they love the products. But if that's not happening, then my products are just sitting on the shelf. And, you know, as I said before, I bought all this stuff. So I've got to get them <laughs> off the shelf. And yeah. so I think being able to connect with people, being able to hit the ground and really sell your product and to tell the story behind it is definitely critical. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, we are really fortunate in the day and age that we live in where, yes, you have to hit the ground, but then you also have social media. Um, and so that's like a billion people that you can have access to. And so I think knowing how to do marketing on many different levels from the actual face to face and connecting with your audience to being able to manipulate the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitter ads and all of that marketing piece is so critical. I think yes. the biggest piece is getting your idea out there and in front of people. Um, yeah. And so that my big goal is figuring out how to maximize that as much as possible. So I think that's um, the number one thing, mm -hmm. honestly, because if people are not seeing your product, then you have no way of knowing if it's a good, viable product that even works. That's, that's true. true, that's true. That is very important. Have you um, considered working with anybody in regards to doing marketing for you or some type of business coach to assist you with that? Well, I'm very fortunate that my sister-in-law is um, has a background in marketing. So oh, that's good. she's going to be helping me with some things. She's done marketing for Groupon and Johnson & Johnson and several other um, companies. So I'm going to be tapping into her. To yes, exactly. <laughs> you have a wealth of knowledge right in your backyard. <laughs> she's um, giving me some ideas already, but we're going to have a formal sit down. I'm like, come on, I need you to help me out here because that is not the easy part. And so I really believe in the product that I have here 
And I just want to make sure that the right people are seeing it. That's 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 the important part. The right people are seeing it. I mean, because that's how I came upon you is through social media. One of my friends, I guess she had bought one of your shirts or saw something. And I went right to your website and I was like, wow, this is really great. I was like, I need to talk to her because I'm all about this is this is the point of this whole interview and the, the whole point of my website is to inspire women to start their business. Like, let's stop sitting on it. Stop just, you know, wishing and saying I would have, should have, could have. Let's do something about it. Let, so I'm trying to they encourage women by seeing other women do things, then they can do the same thing as well. Absolutely. Yes. And so we yeah. have that in common because I want our girls to see there are so many women who look like you who have done amazing things. And yes. we don't always hear about that. But no, if we don't. see that one person has done something or one person has paved the way or opened the door, then that just opens wide doors for what you believe that you can accomplish. So it's so important. And this is so important that yeah. you're doing this. So thank, thank you. For that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if someone wanted to get started today um, and they didn't know where to start, how could you assist them or how, what, what, what are some steps that you would share with them on how to get started today? from your experience? Um, how to get started today, just in general? Um, yeah, just in general, like if I, if I was interested in a, a movement, cause that's what your, your brand is a movement. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had products, maybe I had, uh, t-shirts or maybe I had, I don't know, just some other things in mind. What would you suggest that I would do? I would be able to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say the first thing would be to, sit and think about your target audience and your goals um, and determine exactly who it is that you want to reach. Um, so who are the people that you want to impact? And then I would say to do some research. And the good news is that today with the internet, you can do research very quickly. Like you don't have to go to the Library of Congress and you know go through the card catalogs like I used to, have to do in school for my people. <laughs> You don't have to do that. So you can get on the internet and you can find so much information about people who have done this or done whatever it is that you want to do. And you can learn so much. And people are so willing to share information because that sharing is a big business too. So yes. you can learn so much um, from people. So do your research. And in doing that, you're taking a step. And so your research will lead you to the next thing. And that will lead you to the next thing. And then I would say, just write out a short plan for yourself, uh, maybe one to three months of what you want to accomplish and start there. And again, you may not know the end goal, but by taking that step and putting something small out there for me, for my business, the first thing that I did was create a shirt on Teespring. Mm. Um, so as I was researching, that was something that I came across and I said, hey, that's low stakes. I can create my own shirt on Teespring, do a campaign, send that out, see how it goes, see how people respond to it. And so that's a small step that I took and that anyone can take if they have an idea. Um, yes. If you want to start a movement, that's kind of a great way to do it and to get people excited about a movement and get them wearing and advertising your movement. Um, so just find that small thing that you can do. If you want to sell cupcakes, you know, have a bake sale, have a party, invite people over, let them taste. Because once that word of mouth starts going about your fabulous cupcakes, then, you know, you've already started. You're an entrepreneur. Right. So, You're so, already in business. Exactly. <laughs> Whether it's a lemonade stand. I was telling kids about the little girl who um, just yeah. got a million dollar contract with Whole Foods from selling lemonade. Yes. Yeah, sure that started with a lemonade stand or making lemonade for her family. So take that one step towards whatever it is that you want to do and get that feedback right away about whether this is something viable that people are interested in or whether you need to go back to the drawing board. Right. Yeah. Or make some or make some revisions because yeah. if you if you really believe in it, uh, I really think that a lot of times we in general people in general don't persevere we don't continue plugging in we're right. we're something looks like it's not going to work out then we're on to the next thing mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times looks like with the young lady that did the lemonade it took time and effort and usually people only <clears throat> excuse me 
people only see the end result. They see her with the contract, the whole foods, but they didn't see her out when she was on the corner, you know, yeah. some lemonade and, and going through her recipes and all that stuff like that and trying to really perfect her craft. And I think a lot of times that's why people fail in business. They don't, they don't persevere enough. They don't stick with it. They, um, like I said, they see something going wrong and they move on to the next thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to find that balance of like getting the data and adjusting and then persevering um, and making those database decisions. That's really good. I appreciate all the information that you share with us. If someone wanted to get in contact with you, what are all your websites, your social media? How would they get in contact with you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So my website is www.beautifullybrownme.com. Uh, my email is beautifullybrownme at gmail.com. So I try to keep it pretty simple. Uh, my phone email all hours of the night, even though I'm trying to work on that. But, <laughs> but I yeah, you got you to fit the balance in there because exactly. the only thing I, I will suggest, whatever you start out is how people are going to perceive that right. that's what you're going to do. So if you start out doing that, that's what they're going to they're gonna say. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. I can give her a call. And you're like, no, yes. I really need this time for my family. So that's just a, a, a little tidbit. <laughs> Yes, you're so right. Yeah, that's another episode. Work like that. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> but um, also, you said you're on Instagram and Twitter. So, what are your handles? Yes. And yes, and honestly, like I am just learning how all the social media works. I feel like an old dinosaur because things are just always changing. And every time I think I have them all mastered, then somebody is like, "Oh, there's a new Snapchat out," or <laughs> I, know. I can't remember the name of it. I'm like, "Wow, I'm showing my age here." But yes, I'm on Instagram as Beautifully Brown Me. Um, I'm on Twitter as Belle Brune Moi. So that's the French for Beautifully Brown Me. Okay. I'm on, what else am I on? Tumblr okay. as Belle Brune Moi as well. How do, you, how do you spell that? Just in case they're a little phonetically -E challenged. <laughs> B E L L E B R U N M O I. Um, so that's French. And let's see, what else am I on? I think I covered everything. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm on Pinterest as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. As beautiful brown me. Yes. Beautifully. Okay. Brown me. All right. All right. Great. Great. So if they want to get in contact you, um, contact with you, those are how you can get in contact with Miss Adams. I appreciate you taking the time again to do this interview and, um, I, I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me and again for the work that you're doing. I mean, it's so important and I'll be checking out your site regularly to see what's going on and get that motivation when you hit those valleys because you do need that to keep persevering, as you said. Yes, you do. And, you know, we are overcome by our testimonies and that's how we build strength upon each other. Because if she's out there doing it, you can do it. And maybe there's something in one of the videos that you can learn too by, you know, someone that's been maybe in the industry a little bit longer. You're like, oh, I didn't think about that. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, so I'm glad. open to learning. So thank you. That's great. All right. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.